We're on. Oh, look at me. There you go. Hey, Sharique. Hey, what up, Jay Pink? Hey. I'm good. How are you? I'm amazing on this glorious Thursday. Listen, we weren't here last week, but we're here now. And did um, you miss us? I want, yeah, did they miss us? I think they did. <laughs> it's Limelight Live. We're talking about something really cool, really interesting. And um, yeah, let's just start the show. All right. <laughs> Step into the line. Hey, 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 what's popping, y'all? What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? Hey, hi, hi, hi. We're here. We're, we're here. We're here. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to Limelight Live here at the Good News Radio. Make sure you are tapped in and have the app downloaded, the Good News Radio app. Uh, you can find it on all of their platforms. And please make sure you are following at Limelight Live. Today is Thursday, August 26, 2021. We are almost in September. I heard it's Virgo season. It sure is. Shout out for the Virgos. See? I got my my you chain repping. on, you know, yep, yep. I'm repping, I'm, I'm Virgo. Are y'all earth signs as well? We are, yes, we okay, are earth that's, signs. That's probably how we get along, because I'm a Taurus. Yes, I, I've, I've read that the Virgo and Taurus get along really well. Shout out to my mama, she a Virgo so, too. There you go. <laughs> but yes, thank you for tuning in. This is Limelight Live. We missed you guys last week. We went on a little bit of a hiatus, because, you know, we had things to do. We busy people we, out we here. Were, we were doing things. I was Amazing on a production. Things, as was I. You were on a production, and... We're just like, look, let's just do an off week. And make it work. And we'll make it work. And we'll be back. And now we are back and we have a nice, uh, almost slightly full house. We have two amazing people that we're going to be bringing on to have a wonderful conversation. If you don't know by now, I am Sharique LeMay and my co-host is... Jay Pinkay, you know what it is. You know what it is. So, that just makes me feel good. It does. It makes me feel glittery. (laughs) <laughs> but we have so many things to talk about because we missed a week. So we have some things mm-hmm. to catch up Okay, on. so there's a few things. Um, there's a few things we're going to talk about. So obviously, we're going to get into our flashing light segment. Flashing light. You know. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to emphasize. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, shout, okay. out, shout out to, to uh, Yay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was changing his name, right? He did. I think it's still in process. Yay. Yay, which I guess he said is to stand for uh, people as a collective, whereas mm. Kanye stood for a singular oneself. Okay. Um, and yay is also the most uh, common word in the Bible. Oh. So I don't know if it's going to be yay West or just, I think it's just yay. Oh, that's your friend. Yay. That's your love. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so first up in flashlights, um, actress Letitia Wright was injured on the set of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, She was hospitalized for um, a a stunt scene. Um, Not sure as to what it was for. Um, You know, fans of the Marvel series of the MCU are speculating whether or not she will now be the new Black Panther, if she's going to take the mantle in the MCU with Mm -hmm. this film. Um, because I would hope so if she's doing stunts, right, 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 right. Because I think her weapon in the first film, like she didn't have to like fight, fight. Like she didn't have any physical combat, right. So I think what they said was that she was on like a rig, one of those rigs that like puts you up in the air and okay. like, makes you fly. And I'm like, I don't know what other reason mm. she would need to be doing all that mm-hmm. unless she created some other technology. Because you know that's what she do. Shout out to all the STEM girls out there in the world. Yeah, can we get an applause for the STEM girls? <laughs> Which was not my subject at all. I sucked with <laughs> math, science, all that stuff. I was good at math. I never, I didn't like it. I was, but I was always good at math mm-hmm. um, and science. Like I was good at like biology, um, but I hated like physics was not my thing. And mm-hmm. then chemistry also, I ugh, I hated, hated it. Hated it. Hated it. I had a class. Shout out to all my C Sula people, but I had a class about a uh, seismology about like. 
I don't know. It was just so like stupid. Like the tectonic plates? Like tectonic plates and, and earthquakes and, and things like that, you know. What, what, <laughs> I don't, it was it was a general education. We'll talk about that another time. Yeah. But uh no, I think this is great. I I'm 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 hoping she they said it wasn't a major injury. I think she by now has gotten out of the hospital. Yeah. Um, but I think people were wondering if she was even going to be around because she had yeah. those tweets. Yeah, she came under fire for having yeah. anti vax tweets. Um and there were a lot of fans that were just like I guess attempting to cancel her. I think she even uh, deleted her social media for a, a mm. brief point during that time. Mm. Um, you know, I'm all for freedom of speech. I think everybody has a stance, you know, whether you're vax or anti-vax. Um, you know, uh, maybe they came down too hard on her, I think. I think so. Too. You know, I, I can't I can't force nobody to do nothing. Right. So, you know, she just had, I think she had legitimate concerns. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, you know. Well, shout out to my boy, Mike P, uh, who chimed in. He said, Letitia is definitely confirmed as the next Black Panther. Shuri was Black Panther at one point in the comic and even the animated series. She competed for the, the throne, which we know. Yeah, we know. Like, I mean, don't. Uh, hey, thank you, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> you know, we I know, just I, I didn't know if it was confirmed that, that she's taking the mantle on for the film. But. This is correct. Yes. We would like to see that happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, I'm, I hope she gets wet well. We pray for her and mm -hmm. all of her glory. And I just, I like her. So I'm hoping people. Don't yeah, I do too. Her either. I like Somebody Letitia said too. maybe this is karma because of the anti vax. Oh, child. I was like, people get hurt on sets. Like, no big deal. Don't be putting juju on her. Okay. <laughs> Not for that. All right. So moving on. So, okay. This is big news. Big, big news. All right. So okay. OnlyFans rescinds their initial decision to ban sexually explicit content and has released statements about inclusion for all content creators. So if you don't know about this, if you've been living under a rock, OnlyFans decided to, that they were going to completely ban all sexual, um, like sex workers and their content. And it be, it was a huge uproar. And I know sex workers. Like, so, you mm -hmm. know, I know people that use the platform and stuff. And like a lot of people, this is legitimate, like their, you know, their source of income. You know, a lot of people make actually really good money from this. Mm -hmm. But it was like this big uproar on social media. I know Twitter was just aflame with, with the news. And I mean, there was a big, a fire was totally lit under OnlyFans in regards to them because basically sex workers are what elevated the platform. Definitely. They didn't have the viewership that they had prior to sex workers kind of taking ownership of it. Right. And so, I mean, they, I, I really feel like that would have been so detrimental to their business if they really would have gone through with it. Yeah, I agree. I, <laughs> I think about Tumblr. <laughs> think about like does anybody go on tumblr anymore i sure don't <laughs> okay <laughs> i think yeah i think it just it was just i mean it's 2021 you guys right you know that's that's really my only comment i mean it's their business they have the right you know to say this is not what this platform is for this is not what we want but in actuality you know they also want that coin right and they were getting the coin because of it um you know do you i, I really don't have too much to say about only fans in particular but yeah, no, I just, um, I, like I said, it would have been to their detriment if they really would have gone through with it. And I, yeah. I could have easily seen the company like go under because yeah. they would have lost a, a majority, like a core of their subscriptions. Definitely. So this who wants to do a that? A lot of horny little boys and old men and, and women too. Women too. Plenty. And, and everything else. Listen. That, especially during this pandemic, hunty. Honey, the realms of fetish were explored on OnlyFans and still continue to be so. So shout out to, you know, the sex workers. They still get to keep their platforms. Congratulations to you. Know, you. That's that's good for Can them. Can we give them a twinkle? Twinkle. <laughs> 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 All right. So, Sheree, you need to break this next one down for me because this is interesting. So Spike Lee okay. re-edits his HBO September 11 series that features conspiracists. What is this about? Okay, so Spike Lee has a docu series that it was scheduled to come out, still scheduled to come out in honor of the 20th anniversary of the 9/11 tragedies. Okay, um, he added some edits that included the conspiracy theories that uh -huh. surrounded 9/11. Yeah, most, more importantly, well, most specifically, I should say, uh, the fact that the towers perhaps ex had already established explosives uh -huh. in there because yeah. the planes and the heat would not have heated the metal right. so much so that the entire buildings collapsed. Yes. So there have been, I mean, we've heard it all. We've heard this we've plenty of the times. documentaries, you mm -hmm. know, the conspiracy documentaries, and he's just emphasizing this point. Mm. However, he is coming under fire because of it, because a lot of people that had families that, you know, that, that 
demise or, you know, people that passed away or people that were injured and, you know, fire pe people that are saying, hey, this is a mockery of what we went through, yeah. um, which I don't personally think that's the case. I think we have a right to investigate what exactly happened, uh -huh. you know, because it is kind of I mean, I've never seen a plane go into a building before, so I don't think anybody has. So we don't know <laughs> exactly how the buildings just collect. But it looked really, really to me when I watch it and I'm remembering what was like 13 years old back then. It seems valid. It just seemed very like when you watch buildings be demolished and they blow them up. Right. Mm -hmm. And they fall very strategically. Mm -hmm. That was like the, one of two of the tallest, tallest buildings in New York. Yeah. And it didn't tip over. It didn't. It just fell very mm -hmm. strategically. Strategically. So mm -hmm. I don't blame him for including this. This is things that a lot of people really think about. Questions that need answers. And yeah, we still don't technically have all the answers, Sway. Right. So I, you know, I don't. So is this a re-release or? No, it hasn't been released yet. He just included the, these points to the documentary that gotcha. he was already going to release. And people got wind of it. So it's become a big issue. It's become a big deal. And mm. a lot of people are upset. But oh. me personally, I like, I look, I'm here for it. I mean, I, I have an interest. Yeah. I, I'd like to see what, you know. What Can you it, believe it's been 20 years? I feel like it's been more than that. It's definitely Two, been Oh, yeah, yeah. 20 years. Yeah. 2021. It was 2001. Yeah. 20 years. I remember I was in, I was in high school. I was, I was a sophomore in high school. Yeah. When it happened. And then it was, oh, that was just Wow, 20 years. And we just got out of the war. That's bizarre. Yeah. So think about what all we've gone through as yeah. a nation this past 20 years. I might say something really bad right now. Go for it. Okay. So like my first year of college, I had to go on a trip. It was like a, I had to go on a trip for like church or something, mm -hmm. but I needed to get out of this class. And my professor was like, you know, I don't excuse people unless it's like very valid reasons. And I was going to be in New York during a mm. September 11th memorial. Mm -hmm. So I totally lied and said that I was going to New York for that. I wasn't going for that at all. Oh. But I used that as an excuse to get out of class so that they, <laughs> so my professor would let me <laughs> take a test on a different. He was in high school. I, I, I no, this was college. Oh, this was like a few years later, but it was like a memorial event or something. And <laughs> I'm is, hard. Is there a womp womp button? I don't know. No, there's a yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna want myself for that one. But you know, I, I didn't want it to affect my grade. No. Well, I mean, it's it's just it, to me, it's just so crazy that it's already been 20 years. So many things happened that year. Yeah. And just seeing what's going on in Afghanistan right now with the Taliban and the US troops being pulled out. And to think that we've I don't think we think about it so much, but we've literally been in this war for 20 years. Yeah. 20 whole years mm -hmm. you know and it just it's not broadcasted as much as it could have been or it should have been it kind of just is like a thing we're just so used to yeah um and i think that's horrible that we were just so used to being in this war to think that they're pulling people out and all of the chaos that's happening around it is like oh my gosh you know it's just it's shocking but yeah. um i'm definitely going to be tuning into spike mm -hmm. lee's documentary make sure you guys check that out when it drops i'm gonna and, check it out and uh i'm i mean i'm here to listen to conspiracy theories yeah i think there's some validity to it yeah it doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt at all so hurt. we'll be we'll, we'll tap back in on that one yeah. for sure but y'all leave spike lee alone y'all <laughs> and last but not least the one the only the true baby girl speaking of 20 years we need a resolution we need a resolution we have so much <laughs> It's been 20 years since yeah. the tragic death of Aaliyah. I mean, this girl, she, I freaking, oh my gosh. It's crazy to me how impactful she was, even in her passing. You know, she was only 23 when she passed away. So and, you know, even still to this day, 20 years later, we remember her. We always honor her on her birthday, yeah. you know, on the anniversary of her death. You know, she had a lot of people that really loved her. Yeah. And it's just. It's so sad. And I think I, I every year I go through the same thing. I'm like, man, I wish she was here. And I think a lot of her true fans always ask themselves what could have been had yeah. she still been with us, you know? Yeah. yeah. I just think, again, this is something else that happened in, in 2001. 2001, yeah. It was just so crazy. Mm -hmm. And it happened right around the time <clears throat> of September 11th. So I think a lot of people thought that were outside of the culture, thought that 9-11 overshadowed. Mm -hmm. her her passing yeah. but i think in our community and in, you know it didn't for it, me it was yeah we were it was prominent yeah, yeah it was definitely a thing for us and yeah. it's just majorly 
unfortunate, but I did see something before on my way over here. I saw that uh, more than a, no, one in a million. One in a million is now like number ten for yeah. the first time ever. It's it's in the top trip. ten of the Rolling Stone two hundred. Um, yeah, it's amazing because it was released last week back mm -hmm. to streaming services. So we still have a few more releases. Right, to exactly. Go. She's got three more releases, so they're gonna release her um, the Romeo Must Die soundtrack. Mm -hmm the Aaliyah self-titled album, and then the I Care For You compilation. Oh, no, there's four releases, because then there's going to be a fourth release of unreleased music. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Also, there's, uh, if you go to the Black Round Records website, there's a whole slew of merch, like tour merch and stuff that's now back on sale okay. for Aaliyah, like even some box sets. And um, yeah. That's dope. Like I said, I, I said it. I'm gonna tell myself again, you know, because I downloaded everything on LimeWire. I haven't missed Aaliyah on my playlist too much, so <laughs> I'm happy for y'all. But yeah. uh, I've been jamming it out <laughs> for the longest. Right, it's on my playlist. Right, so, I, I haven't missed a beat. I'm gonna um, stream it though, so she'll get them numbers. Yeah. But, so uh, yeah. shout out to Aaliyah, shout out to her loved ones. Also shout out to everyone yeah. else who um, passed away in that tragic airplane crash that I took know. her life and the life of her crew. Yeah. Um, you know, so to them and their families, we remember Aaliyah, her legacy still lives on and will continue to live on. So did you show your shirt? Like, oh, yeah. Stream yard, me, people can see. Look, I'm rocking my Aaliyah shirt. Okay. I, I designed this. Shirt. She was Virgo too, right? No, she's a she's a Leo. She was a Leo? No. Oh, yeah. Wait. No. Or a Libra. She's Didn't not her a birthday just passed? Yes, it did. So she's a Leo. She's a Leo. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm just trying to represent for all the Virgos. Yeah, my mom <laughs> thank is Thank you. Thank you. you know, I, I do it for the team. But yeah. yeah. So yeah. So that, uh, I'm going to go stream it tonight. Yeah. Please do. I will. Get them numbers up. Definitely. <laughs> and that concludes our flashing lights for the week. Flashing. So I'm excited about this topic. I am too. Um, so a few weeks ago, we reviewed this as this. This was actually a flashlight topic. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. said, I said, you know what, Sharik? I know we have to dive in a little more into this. I was like, we need to dedicate an episode to this because I was so fascinated by this article by Wired, mm -hmm. you know, which basically states that um, uh, co-founders and business partners, they're, you know, turning to couples therapy mm -hmm. as a means to... Um, salvage their businesses, salvage their business relationships, or um, even just, you know, create better efficacy and 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 better just overall business stuff. <laughs> Communication. <laughs> yes, all of those things. And I was fascinated by that because I had never considered that as an option, mm. you know. And so I was like, wait, I know that we have co-founders that listen to us. I know there are, you know, creatives that work together or partner with other people, you know. And so I think it all applies. If you have an ongoing, long a uh, business relationship with anybody in any capacity, mm -hmm. you know, there there are things that are going to happen because like the article mentions, starting a business with someone is like having a baby with them. Yeah. And so you, you are going to go through the ups and downs of what that relationship looks like when you disagree oh, on yeah. things. And, you know, so I, I thought it was important that we dive into this. And I love that we have two amazing guests in our yes. studio. Well, they're more like family. Yeah, they and, you know, they They're in this world. So what? better to you know have guests in here other than these two so i'll let you go ahead and do the introduction right so first i'll intro i like to introduce chaz cruz chaz lamar cruz um author his second book just came out busy ain't the half of it and i th I wanted to invite him here because he, second book? he yeah he co-wrote this book with another author and and so i was like i i wanted to pick his brain on on the creative mm -hmm. aspect you know does this concept sound good to him it's called Busy Ain't the Half of It. Hold on, let me show, let me show. Bam. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so Chaz, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Thank Frederick you. Smith, is this the Frederick Smith I it know? It is the Frederick Smith. Oh, that's so awesome. Dr. Smith. You know, we go way back, me and Chaz. We do. Undergrad at Cicilla. That's right. Shout out to the family. We have a we have a big family. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then secondly, I'd also like to introduce Laurel Scott. He happens to be my best friend, <laughs> you know, but he's also the co-founder of Startup Starter, which I'll let him talk about more. But he's he's like the startup king. You um, want to talk about startups? Great. Laurel is the one to talk to <laughs> because talk about it. Yes. Man. He will talk your ear off. <laughs> Remember, we, we got 30 minutes, Laurel. <laughs> but I'll yeah, keep it to a minimum. 
Yeah, Laurel, tell, tell us about Startup Startup. Wow, yeah. So thank you everyone for having me. Um, thank you guys for having me. You guys have been doing an amazing job thank you. kicking this off over these last weeks. So I'm, I'm excited to be back. Um, uh -huh. I was here for the first day. Um, but yeah, so Startup Starter. Um, so I'm the co-founder, COO, and head of global partnerships. And we are on a journey to democratize entrepreneurships, whether that is in the minority LGBTQ or women's um, industries, um, to shed more light on the um, inequities that come within creating a business, learning about business, whether you want to go to college, went to college, did not get into college that you wanted to go to, or if you dropped out, right? There, there is a big place in the world still for you and that that understanding is, is is missing so we that's the direction we're going we're launching a streaming platform so look out for it okay thank you Fine. and that's startupstarter.com correct that is startupstarter.co .co. yeah got yes. it make sure you guys go check that out if you have some questions he's very knowledgeable yeah, yeah. plug plug plug, plug equity plug crowdfunding it. week coming up guys we need the money <laughs> get some money. so let's talk about this guys first off i just want to get your initial um your your initial reaction to this to this thing you know what what do you think um does this make sense is this something that you think people are doing the most by doing this or is this something that really does make sense I mean, for me, so Josh reached out to me and he asked me, did I want to come to the show? And I said, OK, what are you guys talking about? Like, you know, I want to I want to I want to talk on something. And he told me um, about the article, sent it to me and I read it. And I was just like, wow, this is crazy because this is actually a conversation that myself and co-founder have been having recently about, mm -hmm. you know, how important that could be for the growth of the business. Right. Mm -hmm. I think people look at their own personal like endeavors within the organization what they're going to get out of it versus like the overall growth of the business and i think that you can shed light on that through this so this is this is an amazing topic yeah this is something you think you would do oh absolutely yeah like if you it's a relationship right yeah it's if you're in a marriage if you're with whoever boyfriend girlfriend girlfriend boyfriend whatever this is something when you have relationships i would do this with this fool right here josh yeah if, he and i know, are about to go into business together so uh, like you know but we don't have those issues you know <laughs> Uh, let's see yeah. let's see down the road yeah we'll no, see no, y'all no, we'll, we'll, we'll update you on next year's uh follow-up of this <laughs> um but yeah i mean it's, it's very important i think that it's very important to nurture all relationships i mean whether it's your mother as well you know what i mean so this is good yeah definitely and then for you Chaz, i know you wrote, wrote i know you and frederick go way back we do yeah, yeah. that's our second novel so when you you sent the article to me the i didn't even read it i was like oh absolutely this is a no-brainer yes makes sense Mm -hmm. um but i had never thought about business partners going to therapy mm -hmm. like that language was not the language i thought of but as soon as i read the title i was like yes because it's about relationships and i think therapy is a practice everyone needs this yeah. is my yeah. belief um and i'm trying to tie it not to tie it to the book but the book the busy at the half of is about like friendship friend dynamics and i think that Friend dynamics is a topic I think many of us need to explore more mm -hmm. and how to nurture friendships. And I I, I believe friends should go to therapy together mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, I never I'll thought just of that. I agree. That right now. I absolutely agree. I never Definitely. thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm in a co-founder relationship as well. And I think for me, when I think about it, I'm like, ooh, like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, because this is somebody that I didn't know outside of this. You know, I was actually right. brought in as, mm -hmm. you know, I was asked to be a co-founder and I met them on a business uh, level in regards to this particular situation. And I'm like, I don't want to be all in your feelings and you mm -hmm. be all in mine, but I don't know, you know. And I thought what was interesting about the article is that they mentioned that, you know, contrary to when you are in a friendship or a relationship, you have more conversations about your emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas typically in a business setting, that's shunned upon, you know, mm -hmm. it's looked at kind of sideways. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas as, you know, everybody's going through stuff and I think it's very stressful, you know, co -found, being a co-founder for me because I'd never done it. I kind of got thrusted into it. Yeah. On accident. Um, but, you know, it was it was one of those things I had to really, really, really get used to. And yeah. I still think I'm not all that used to. Mm -hmm. And I still think there's a part of me because I came in later. I don't feel like it's my baby. Right. either. And I think that could be a dynamic that needs to be explored is whoever whoever's baby it is mm. you know there's going to be a different dynamic between whoever comes in later so like you're like the step parent 
I guess so. Yeah. I guess and those are all that. things that could be explored in therapy because it's about ownership and having conversations right. about that with the, with the business partner or the partner. Right. I, I think it's about like those are those sometimes can fall into the the area of insecurities in ourselves. Like, mm. how do I address mm. how being the step parent of this baby that your business partner started first? Like, right. how does that make me feel? Right. And because sometimes when we have a lack of addressing that, then it then it seeps into the business relationship and we don't realize that oh we kind of could be the cause of why it's seeping in because we're not addressing within ourselves like what that makes us feel like mm-hmm. right have you guys ever experienced that yourselves or how do you how do you deal with with conflict if you if you have dealt with it you ain't got to bust nobody out but <laughs> conflict is comes regardless okay when you are in a business relationship you are you are you're never going to see eye to eye on everything everyone right. has a different idea of what the business looks like mm-hmm. what they want to get out of the business mm-hmm. right and then on top of that you have to also take a step back and say like what is my role in this business mm-hmm. yeah. like what are my strengths in this business that are going to help elevate us right mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. play to those and allow your co-founder to play to their strengths. And I think where the conflict comes is like when you start to like get out onto the other line in their space Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know, there becomes a a place where can control can come into place. Like, Oh, like, you know, you're stepping on my toes. I'm stepping on your toes. Right. It can go either way. And I think that we have to be very conscious of how we approach every situation when it comes to how we interact with our co-founders. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big collaborator. So I've written two novels with Fred. I'm work- working on a web series with Devin O'Kane. Um, I'm one of the lead writers. It's him and I are writing this season two. And oh, of, of Handsome. I'm sorry. I yes, that, I, yes, I remember you. the series. Yes. Handsome. Handsome, the series. And what I am learning is the folks who I work with, they all go to therapy. <laughs> And we learn by, as them, by themselves individually. Yeah, yeah we the, all mm-hmm. go to therapy, and therapy is so normalized in our relationships. We talk That's about good. what we learn in therapy. Um, we learn like different communication um, skills. Uh-huh. So when there are boundaries that may be crossed or boundaries that need to be re uh, reshared, we okay. know how to do that. Yeah, or we uh, wasp well, myself. I challenge myself to do that, to have those conversations with the people I'm working with. Yeah. But th- therapy is like a staple in all the relationships, all the creations that I'm, that I'm in. Yeah. I'm and do you think that. that that's, that's allowed those relationships sure. to be very healthy? For They have, they have allowed them to last this long okay. and mm. for us to work through the difficulties because in collaboration, ca- conflict happens, ideas, we don't agree on everything, especially when it, when you think about like creativity and world building and storytelling, working with two minds can be difficult. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And releasing ownership can be difficult, mm-hmm. but I am, um, I've been going to therapy for a while now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's really why I, 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 why I thought it was fascinating to have you on this panel because it's like, you know, like you're building a story yeah. with someone else and you might have a certain idea for a character and where they, exactly. where you want them to go and somebody else might have something totally different. For sure. Um, but that's really fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I thought was interesting about the article too, that the therapist that actually does this um, she was emphasizing the fact that she's a relationship therapist. She's not mm-hmm. your business, business coach, exactly. you know, and I thought that was very key. Yeah. And, you know, I know that there are a lot of business, p- business management companies and things like that and consultants that are out there. Um, and I think oftentimes they might find themselves having to therapize their clients, mm-hmm. so to speak. So I think to have something completely designated specifically for the relationship and the communication between the, the founders, I think, you know, is, is really good. And I thought that was good that she, she yeah. threw that line. Like, mm-hmm. hold on. Yeah. Cause that's right. the element that's missing. Right. Yeah. It's, it's the, the interpersonal relationship between right. you. So, I mean, it's good to talk to people, period. Can, can any of y'all pronounce that name that's in the article? That last name? <laughs> Ch- 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 something. something right somebody's last name was damn yeah. and i just kept saying damn <laughs> yeah i had to put my glasses on make sure like wait is there an, an another m or an n in there i'm like that's a weird name damn. but but for me like therapy like man people like tend to look down on therapy i think that Still, the, yes. mm-hmm. i think that in the millennial age 
right? I think that we're more open to it because if you think about our parents, right? Like, oh no, we don't do that here, yeah. right? We keep everything secret. We don't tell nobody about our problems, right? right. I think that we're so much more open to it right. to where it now is feeding into like business, um, which first of all, the, the session prices in there are that was expensive. Uh, yeah, it was two thousand dollar monthly retainer. Yeah. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. See, yeah. <laughs> insurance don't cover this. Uh, <laughs> that was it. Was it in Northern California? Um. Oh, I think Silicon, yeah, Valley. Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. Yeah. Fix it. Yeah. Well, no, it changed my life. Therapy for me specifically for sure. changed my life. But like, when you can find someone who also shares the the value of therapy and you're in business with them, then they'll understand. Right. Like, yo, we need to go to therapy. Let's talk about it. And it doesn't have to be. The problem is. It doesn't have to be when there is an issue. You can go to therapy early before there is an issue. Like, and this this is also something I talk about in my my relationship with my partner. Like, we don't have to wait until something's wrong for us to go early. Because mm -hmm. what we don't realize is that people are dealing with more than just this damn business, mm -hmm. right? You're dealing with personal, your own personal issues, your own whatever you you know traumas, or in, in addition to that, your own um, you know what you're continually bringing from your family, right? Generational curses. You're dealing with all those things on top of that, a pandemic. Yeah. Okay. Finances, all of that. Like, so like that just adds another element to your business, especially if you got to pivot. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that was the basis even of the, of the article was, you know, that the, the pandemic itself was what was starting to drive the co-founders to, go. I don't know if sure. you could give any insight, but like, did that change your dynamic, your business relationship? Yes. So busy at the half of it. We wrote it during the pandemic. Right. Um, and our lives drastically changed. Like we sent the proposal. It was greenlit. And then you say greenlit? Green yeah, that was yeah. good. Greenlit it. Greenlit it. Greenlit. <laughs> green <lit. laughs> and um, our lives drastically changed as we were writing it. Um, not only did we have to like navigate the pandemic, but our work lives changed. And so there was a lot of there were moments where a lot of negative tension could arise, but mm. there was just, we were just navigating a lot. And so our writing changed how we, um, how we met, how we talked about the book. Mm -hmm. It all changed. And I'm glad that I learned, we both had like communication skills that we can communicate. Thank you. For, oh, I was really away from the mic. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the pandemic did yeah. uh, cause a drastic shift in our writing. Were y'all meeting in person? No, we were re meeting That's this book. Yeah. We were meeting virtually. Mm -hmm. um, our writing patterns were totally different. Yeah. Um, everything was totally different because mm -hmm. of the pandemic. And our, our, well, my patience, my creativity was being tested. Yeah. Because I'm a person, I'm a Sagittarius, mm -hmm. and I am stimulated with travel. I'm stimulated with fun. Mm -hmm. um, I was locked in my room for almost a year. That was doing a lot. You ain't yeah. outside? Or <laughs> walk, run, nothing. I mean, a little bit. I did. But I was also living in San Francisco at the time. And San Francisco had, like, some really strict yeah. restrictions. Yeah. Restrictions. And what was happening, too? Oh, the uprisings were happening this yeah. past mm -hmm. year. And so we were on curfew. A lot was happening in the world. So much. And so, yeah. So yeah. It, 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 I mean, it's crazy just to think. I mean, for, for, for me specifically, like, the pandemic, business-wise, the pandemic was amazing for me. Because um, you created your business during the pandemic. Yeah, we create our our business derived out of the the remnants of COVID. I mm -hmm. mean, because so many people were losing their jobs, so many people still had business ideas, and people had, that have jobs typically have a certain level of entrepreneurship mindedness, right? And so mm -hmm. it was a really big place for them to actually like be creative and say, you know what. I mean, for real, I'm on unemployment, so I'm about to launch a business. Shout out to SBA and PPP. Okay. Some people got paid. Some people got paid. Yeah. <laughs> Just claps. Um, so for us, it was great. Like we, what it, it was a different element than like what you're speaking of and like having to adjust to like, oh, I'm in my room and I'm, I'm. I'm not able to connect and be in front of them, right? Mm -hmm. For for me, my co-founder and his wife, we moved together during the pandemic under one roof mm -hmm. to build our company, which oh, wow. actually helped elevate us. 
Yeah, but there's just still a certain level of intimacy. And he talks about that yeah. in this article. There's mm-hmm. certain, still a certain level of intimacy. We're not talking about sleeping together, right? There ain't no... Ain't We're not. Going on. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, right. Um, but there's still a certain level of intimacy that you have when you're under the roof with your with your, with your your co-founder, right? When you, Even if you look back to uh, Mark Zuckerberg and when he started, when they started mm-hmm. Facebook, they built it out of a garage, right? Yeah. And I feel that that's... Yeah. Where I'm at in my relationship with my co-founder is like, yo, we're building this business from the ground up in this garage, which happens to be a living room. But like it allowed us to be able to think, it allowed us to be able to be creative mm-hmm. together. But it also adds a level of like, you get on my nerves. I don't feel like being bothered today, right? Exactly. And it might be coming from both ends, but like you have to like take a step back. And I think one of the things I learned, and me and Josh talk about this all the time, is when you're in any relationship, especially a business relationship, um, partner, or whatever, friends, and like I'm guilty of it myself, is listening to listen mm-hmm. and not listening to respond. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of times when you have those egos and you're not used, you're not in an intimate relationship, you're like psh, ego, 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 and then you you're missing for sure everything because you can't bring it down. You listen to rebuttal versus listen to understand and mm-hmm. and and. That's another thing the article talked about is that therapy, especially during talking about business, it has helped folks slow down. Yeah. And when you're in a business, you're trying to not slow down. You're trying to like keep momentum and keep things moving forward. But it is important to slow down every relationship to listen, to understand mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. listen to rebuttal. Yeah. And in business is hard to slow down. Man, I tell you, like right now, like, I mean, Josh knows this. These last week has been crazy for me. I'm putting together the uh, biggest um, equity crowdfunding um, conference <laughs> that there's ever been um 2021 equity crowdfunding week so psh, be there <laughs> um but you know it, it's it's really tough to slow down when you're in a business and then that allows those other things those things that can damage your relationship creep in because mm-hmm. slowing down affects yeah. so many other factors you know if there's stakeholders mm-hmm. involved there's investor, if there's investors involved deadlines all of that stuff the way my bank account is set up <laughs> Let's talk about that. And then let's, I, I mean, let's, being that this is my first time going through a whole co-founder, tech co-founder situation where right. you have your seed, your seed rounds, your series A, mm-hmm. your series B, and you're, I'm learning all of this stuff as I go along. It's draining as mm-hmm. hell. It is so mind boggling and draining. And I just be like, child, mm-hmm. is this for me? I just want to go. <laughs> I just want to go create. I just want to make the money. You know, but yeah. there's all of these processes and these these steps, and yeah. it's just remarkable to to know that this is what really goes on behind mm-hmm. the scenes, and not a lot of people know that. And I, you know, I commend everyone that's been thugging it out through the pandemic because this was hard. And I love that you guys were in the same space because whereas mm-hmm. me and my co-founder, we were in two different coasts. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? We're on complete opposite coasts. Whereas I'm one of those people that I have to be motivated. You have to motivate me, and mm-hmm. I I I like working from home. But I do miss the office setting sometimes, being able to feed off of that energy yeah. with other people. You yeah. know, I you long still have different schedules, right? So like yeah. sometimes I come downstairs because our rooms are upstairs. I come downstairs and I'll, I, I can do what I want. I mean, I, we own this business. So sometimes mm-hmm. I'll be like, I'm like, I don't get up till 11 o'clock if I don't want to, right? But I, <laughs> I feel bad because I get down there and my, my co founder's been working since 9 a.m., right? Mm-hmm. But uh, do y'all have those conversations or have y'all had those conversations about like time and work? We have. Um, I think that because of where we are in our own growth, it's like we're constantly just we got we're pumping something out. Right. We pivoted. Mm -hmm. We've changed our our product. We've done all those different things to get to where we are to be proud of. Like, yo, like we 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 did this together. Right. Right. We fought through it, but we did it together. Right. And so that's where that whole element of counseling and therapy come in not only for yourself but because you need to like when you're in a relationship you don't only go for counseling for yourself right you go see that counselor with your partner and i think that that's important for us to acknowledge like the effect that that has not only on an individual but on that type of relationship and how you can bring that element here and now right it's going to save so many businesses um to to be able to talk about what they're feeling Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. what about the money what about the money? I feel like money is just like the root of, of a lot of conflict with yeah. any co-founder. If you've gotten to the point where you've actually raised, right? Or if there may be disputes on how much you should raise, because some may think, oh, that, you know, that number may be overly ambitious or, over, oh, this may not be ambitious enough. And then, okay, how much equity do we have to give away if we do get an investor? What about angel investors? There's just so much. Those are awkward questions that exactly. you should be having with your partner. Yeah. Me, for me, like I said, for me, 
you know, when it comes to the business that I didn't birth myself, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, whatever you want to do, that's fine. I didn't really have any input, but I think yeah. my co-founder had gotten frustrated. Like, no, I need your input. Exactly. And I'm like, but yeah. it's your baby. I'm yeah. here to support. You know, I felt like I was more of a support. Um, but I can see that being a conflict with, you know, People. equally yoked co-founders that have completely opposite ideals when it comes to that. It, I think it all it it's trust. You took right? the word out of my mouth. Like mm -hmm. you don't want to be in a business. You don't be in a, first of all, you want to be in a business, friendship relationship anybody that you don't trust right? right and so for me like funny story like you're coming talking about seed and pre-seed and all those different things but i i learned that from my last corporate job like you know i went into that job and they were saying seed pre-seed and all that and i said wait a minute we sell seeds like what, what else what <laughs> so you know <laughs> getting to a place where like i learned how and you know venture capital works and investment works mm -hmm. and, and over the last couple of years like i also know that my co-founder it, that's more his strength yeah and i have to trust him to be like yo what you what do you think like so and educate me mm -hmm. ask the, so i can ask the questions so that i can i can get better you know equipped to answer it for some someone else when they ask me about it right yeah and so typically for me i'm i trust my co-founder to make those decisions he's the ceo like I trust him to make those decisions, just like as he trusts me as a coo to structure the company properly mm -hmm. um but there come like I need to be included. Right. Right. And that's where, again, that trust comes in. It's like, I, do I trust you to include me? Like, I need to see what's going on. Yeah. yeah. You need to be included because I'm going to need to trust you when we go into business. Well, because you, that's you, not my you, realm either. So wait a minute. Are y'all going to go to therapy coins. before you, you this, this new venture? Or It's funny because me and Josh have a very unique relationship. Yeah. I think Josh really helps me like in my personal and in, mm -hmm. in just conversation i know that something happens he's him uh, anisha plug you too girl i'll call you too hey, uh, but um <laughs> but i call josh whenever i have something going on in my life and mm -hmm. he can talk me off like he talks about in this article right getting talked off a ledge right um mm -hmm. uh, he's able to talk me off a ledge so i don't see us having that issue to where we need to go to counseling i think there when you feel there's a need you should go Right. But just, see, that's what they talked about in the article. The lady was saying, well, people don't do it before there's a problem. Mm -hmm. But his, there's a difference, though, yeah. because usually business partners are not intimate. They're not intimate friendships, as you talked about earlier. Right. So, like, this is a friendship. So y'all already have some kind of uh, community agreements, friendship agreements that y'all And we have trust. Goes to and trust. Mm -hmm. But business partners, like you were saying, the mm -hmm. kind of business partner that you're in, there was probably no grounding in an intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that, and the things you even your examples of like of not feeling like you own it mm -hmm. those kind of feelings can um build up mm -hmm. and cause resentment mm. and then that leads to a crisis in the partnership and then you go to therapy Did and you then you don't, you don't address it me? you don't address it so but like so <laughs> friendship things are, are a little bit different so you may not need therapy if your friendship is solid and healthy yeah. but you may need it too because you will then discover your friend in different ways because yeah. you'll have different conversations. Well, also, typically, like, a lot of times when you go into business with someone, this ain't someone you found off the street. You didn't go to Craigslist and find this person. Typically, you're going to business with a friend. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, 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 it might sometimes happen. Sometimes you Shereen do. Uh, but, I mean, but a lot of times, like, you know this person already, but, you know, you might already have a friendship. I think that, like, I, we would go to counseling counseling together me and josh if we, in, in a business scenario if we needed to i think that i think we would recognize it when you know, that's right, right right. you're mouth. like if if you're not i don't know if y'all talk like every day but it, every day every exactly day. so if it's like uh, three days went by then something's probably up yeah and then i'll be like a, you guys know it's your door you know each other's what's happening that exactly you know, uh -huh. you know each other's patterns yeah. you know how each other and things. we also know each other's strengths yeah. Exactly. And so I think that's that that's also helped. Yeah. yeah. I was also gonna mention Sharik, you and I, I mean, this isn't a startup, but we create this, this is our yeah, yeah, I mean, we're true. we're on season four, and I think going into it, you and I, we we just knew. I think y'all need therapy. Uh, <laughs> no, I feel like you therapizing us right now. But after four years of of this production of this mm -hmm. show, I mean I, I can't point out any 
one time that we've had any real conflict. Mm -hmm. I just know sometimes I, I procrastinate and I'm honest about it. You know, and I have so many things going on in my life and I'm we like, both, we, I think I we do both this. do at some points, but we, we both catch each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's, it's always like, it's definitely partnership. Yeah. And whenever there's been entities outside of you and I that we've needed to, you know, do business with or something like it, it's always felt like a united front, mm -hmm. you know, That's so important. we, we have definitely. our side conversation and we're like, okay, this is we where I stand. Where do you stand? How that do you feel so about important. this? Like, yeah. you know, and so I think in, in that regard, we've established something that we're protective of. We mm -hmm. both are. And ultimately we, we want to see each other grow and mm -hmm. we want the best for each other. And I think that's, that's what's helped. What did you have in partnerships? Up? That's probably important. <laughs> you a high five too. <laughs> yes, <I'm fine. laughs> Yeah. yeah, we out here giving high five. That was hard, but <laughs> oh, thanks. sorry, I'm heavy. Yeah, dude, I'm heavy. We're all like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Catherine, who's somebody else that I really love and appreciate, who's always been, you know, on my side. She's gonna me. She and I are gonna be working on. Some oh, stuff shout out, Catherine. Cat. Hey, she said this is such a great topic. Oh, I'm I'm glad you're yeah. tuning in, girl. <laughs> this yeah. is a great topic because I think it's important. Like we say, co-founder, but business partners. Mm -hmm. That is why I have yeah. business, business partner, partner, business partnerships. So, how do you guys feel about business partners and family? In family, like, family, like, like, like going family? into business with your family. oh, with like your brother, your cousin. Oh, your... I said, wait a minute. I know. Uh... So, 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 child, so, not me. There's, there's two sides to that, right? Why do we both say? Yeah, we did, right? <laughs> there's two sides to that, though, right? Mm -hmm. So, one side of that is, um, you know, your family. Mm -hmm. You know which ones you can work with, mm -hmm. right? And the other side of that is. And I'll specifically speak in the in in the the minority communities, right? And mm -hmm. there's a difference. It's funny because I had this conversation with my grandmother recently about how that older generation in the the black community specifically how they think in terms of like money and like oh I got it on my own nobody helped me so they want you to go out and do that yourself. Mm -hmm. But when in in 2021 when you have a family or you're creating a family, your mindset is generational wealth. Right. So if you can bring generational wealth to the forefront and stop taking those old uh, what baby boomer ideals and mm -hmm. bringing them into uh, Gen Hi, Z Dad. and millenniums. No offense <laughs> for those for those watching. Hi, uh, but I mean, it's true. Like, so you have to think about those two facets of, yeah. of business. Like, how do I create general wealth? or my family, or am I going to go out there and just do it with somebody else and help them create generational wealth for their family, but not giving back to what mm. my, I guess you could say like for the country, my forefathers and my foremothers <laughs> have started, right? <laughs> and how I got here and are the, and you think back in the terms of like where, especially in, in, in the black community of like slavery and all those things, like there's a lot that we need to be able to take from what's happening mm. in this world that we're not, and that we don't have access to. And that's, one of the biggest things that we're doing in, 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 in startup, startup starter is creating that access, mm -hmm. right? And democratizing entrepreneurship across all people, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's still that. So, gap. would you go into business with your family? <laughs> So I would, I would. I've actually, my, my, my brother works for Intel, and I told him, I was like, yo, hey, we got this app. I need you on Period. it. Period. Like, I need you writing this code. That is so. I, I know which ones to work with. <laughs> There's just certain yeah. ones you you you're not gonna be giving no money to. Yeah. See, yeah, I would I would I would do business things with my family, but be very clear about what roles we will have. Okay. I wouldn't. What role are you giving them? I wouldn't see myself <laughs> being a hundred percent fifty fifty in a business with a family member. Okay. okay. But I oh, can see myself right being, there, y'all. Being. Uh, a silent investor in a business for my family. I can see myself um, being a like a consultant for, I'm thinking of specific people, like you said, in, who right, are right. business owners in my family. Right. Things like that. And where money is involved, but it is a very specific role. I mean, because let's be honest, I'm going to just have a truthful moment with y'all, and I'm sure y'all experience this as well. Um, a lot of family just don't fool with, with, with what you're trying to do. No. Nope. That's just the easiest way nope. to say it. So, and I don't fool what they're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you're two-way street. It's downplayed. It's very mm -hmm. downplayed, or people see it. You know, they'll give you some thumbs up on on mm -hmm. Facebook, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. But in, yeah. in terms of actually investing the time into sharing it with their networks or just doing things, mm -hmm. you know, to help elevate you and really truly believing you and pouring into you mm -hmm. monetarily, that just typically does not happen. Mm -hmm. no. um, and I've experienced that in my own family, minus you know one or two people. Yeah. So you yeah. know, you tend to want to 
grab on to those one uh-huh. or two people that do because that's your family. They're supporting yeah. you. And, you know, let's do this, yeah. you know, but I think this idea of therapy, I think would be very, very, very crucial for if you're doing sure. this with a family member. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. Because there's all kinds of different things that are happening dynamically within yeah. the family, within your relationships. For sure. This auntie, that uncle, this cousin, you know. So yeah. I think. Because you don't get to choose be, your family. You don't. You don't. And, and if, that's a lie. Yeah. I chose you. <laughs> but that's your you friend. That's, your right? that's, your family, that's, that's right? the family you, you choose. Your chosen yes. family. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But your blood family, you can't choose them. Yeah. You don't like all of them. The my time. mother always taught tries to say uh she says lamar she doesn't my middle name lamar um can i just come like work for you can i just be like your office assistant and i'm like it it would never work because the moment you get offended on my behalf your mother have comes on uh-huh. and you mm-hmm. it just Crying, are, right. maybe you know. want to fight somebody mm-hmm. right. like, yeah. mama, i love it but no yeah. right. there's been times where my mom has asked me to like be like be a part of the family business she she owns an insurance agency and i'm like mom no i don't one i don't want to sell insurance and two right. i know I, you're my mom like no you're yeah. not gonna be my boss that is not I the would... family business i want to sell <laughs> no yeah. and then she's like well i sell mary Kay. why don't you be one of my and i was Shut like mama mary Kay. i started for mary Kay. Hell, somebody sell it before <laughs> but i was like home. i didn't want to be under my mom and like i was like no mom celebrities it's okay. it's talk okay. about that <laughs> like managed by parents and then it becomes like bad mm-hmm. yeah no <laughs> it's funny because if you really think about it like your family right mm-hmm. half the your, most of the time you can still be close to your family love your family but a lot of times you don't hang out with your family once you get older like you're not kicking it you're not doing the same things you don't have the same interests right some people do i Many think it depends do. on it depends on a, a number of factors mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like i'm I, that would be me i don't hang out with my family i yeah. love them but there's a certain degree that i don't like them you know mm-hmm. we are very different yeah. We are very different, and I think different culturally. I think different, differently politically, mm-hmm. and I think very differently business wise. Yeah. Um, Who you vote for, friend? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> you oh, know, no. on September what is it? September fourteenth. <laughs> oh, can I say that on your on your? Yes, please. Oh, oh no, it's September fourteenth. <laughs> but um, just no, don't, just vote no. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Just vote no. <laughs> but but you're right. Like it's it's it's. I don't see where me going into business with somebody in my family would would be beneficial for me because we're there's so many different things already as a whole trying to be on a playing field with them on a business level i just it would be distracting but don't you guys think that's kind of sad like are not yes. disheartening so to speak because if you if i think about like the black renaissance era you know and just you know all these black businesses family-owned businesses uh-huh. that that rose and people were were flourishing you mm. know like I just think it's so remarkable, and I would love to be able to be like, "Come on, mindset, generational and mindfulness." Yeah, that's what that's what's missing in a lot of those type of relationships is the uh, mindfulness and just people not taking the time to really look at like, especially like I'm big on like, dang, like how how come we don't have the generational wealth that we should, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's a big problem Mm -hmm. right and if you're not thinking about those things when you're creating these things like for me i love i love my family right Mm -hmm. they get on my damn nerves but i love my family and i'm very giving i i mean i'll drop what i'm doing like you know in a crisis because it there you only have one like of you you have one mother you have have four grandparents right Mm -hmm. and once they're gone they're gone so it's like you cherish those moments um but that don't mean there's not conflict Right. right. And it's the same thing with your when you look at those backgrounds, when especially when you're looking at the co-founder relationship, we have to remember the backgrounds that we come from, our childhoods, what I went through growing up. Right. Mm-hmm. Wow. I ain't gonna walk, well, why would I why it wouldn't work for my mom or whoever it is. Right. <laughs> you got to think about those things because those those things play into mm-hmm. your your business relationship as well as your 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 partner relationship right. your girlfriend boyfriend whatever right. you you see those things come in because of the lack of understanding of where that person comes from and if you right. don't take the time to figure out where that person comes from and you only see them on the surface level mm-hmm. then that's where the issues see being because now i don't know how to deal with you because you're you're dealing with your own thing and not not handling that it's like it's like you're taking baggage with you. So if I have a co-founder now and I leave that company, go get a co be another co-founder with Josh. Right. But I got resentment and things that I dealt with in that relationship. I'm literally just packing my bag of resentment, 
I'm packing my bag of stuff. I don't want right? all that baggage. Baggage. I'm Erica getting to that. I usually would say the bed, the, you know, when you get to your boyfriend's a new boyfriend, you put it under the bed. No, you're putting it under the desk in the office and you're mm. kicking that bag out of there mm-hmm. and you're not pulling that bag out and having unpacking. Your, yeah, you're not unpacking with your co-founder mm. to mm-hmm. so they can understand you better. And that's mm-hmm. where those other issues seep in that we're not really addressing. Yeah, I agree. Woo. Mm. Deep. I wanted to point out, okay, just to, I think you pronounce it Kaizen Guantum or Shazen Guantum. So you've been sitting there trying to figure that out? Yes. Oh. <laughs> we appreciate you for that. <laughs> right. I still can't Give me say a second. It. I'm going to look it up. No, this I think it's really Kaizen Guantum. Yeah. This is a really great conversation. I do want to take some time. So for you, Chaz, I know we talked about the book, but oh, what yeah. else do you have coming up? And where can oh. people find you? Where can they get the book? Yes. You can. The half of it. There are many places you can get the book. You can order it online on Amazon or the publishing company, which is Bold Strokes Books. You can find me on social media at chzcruz or go to my website, chazlcruz.com. Give us a quick sizzler on what it's about. Yes. So the book mm-hmm. follows two characters. It's an uncle and nephew. Um, they're both in entertainment in some aspect. Elijah Golden is a 30-year-old um, actor who's trying to get his like big break in the industry. It's okay. set in LA. But he's also navigating his relationship with his boyfriend, Zaire, and they have different ideas of where the relationship should go. That's Mm -hmm. one character. The other one is Justin Monroe, who is the uncle to Elijah, who is an anchor at a number one news um, station and is being replaced. And now he's figuring out how he's going to take care, not take care of who he wants to be to his teenage twins um, and how open he wants to be in his sexuality now that he's not the number one journalist mm. in town mm. oh he's 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 also a queer character he is nice he's, he's specifically bisexual okay justin nice so make sure you guys check that out and i know it's gonna be good because i read your first book and i loved it Thank i mean you. loved it loved it loved it i felt yeah. like i wanted to be friends with your characters yeah. it's set in la <laughs> to you bring us any tonight <laughs> i mean i got mine yeah, also see. the characters both of the main characters are from sacramento Yes, that town's where I'm from, y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. Interesting. El Grove, baby. All right. Okay. And then we I know we mentioned Startup Starter, but where yeah. can everyone find you? So you guys can go to startupstarter.co. Um, we are launching um, the uh, masterclass style Netflix um, streaming platform where anything that you want to learn, business, marketing, cryptocurrency, equity crowdfunding, any of that, you can um, you can learn it there and you'll be able to watch it like a 4K cinematic value. Uh, we are just now going into production right now. Um, we now have a studio, Yay. 120,000 Yay. square feet. Um, <laughs> and um, check us out. We are launching, again, the largest equity crowdfunding conference with every major player from Canada, EU, as well as the US. Um, so if you are interested in investing in companies and getting a stake in them, come to Equity Crowdfunding and learn. If you're looking to start your startup or tech startup, whatever it is, your your actual physical product, you can come to Equity Crowd Funding. We can figure out another alternative way of raising capital for it from the crowd, right? Um, and join us. Yeah, go to uh, startupstarter.co slash ECW for Equity Crowd Funding Week. We have the first 500 tickets on sale right now. It went out that? yesterday. Um, it is October 4th through October 8th, and it's going to be one to go to. And wait till he announces who's one of his speakers. OMG. Shut up. <laughs> but anyway. It's going to be big. Yes. <laughs> and I'll send you all my OnlyFans at a later time. <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you, if you're interested in Kush, uh, we Ooh, will have uh, the <laughs> original creator of the Strand, OG Kush, uh, Mr. Uh, Bubba Kush himself Bubba Kush. on the Equity Crowdfunding Week. So okay. check that out. Um, yeah, you guys should be there. Check it out. Go there now. Go to LinkedIn. Follow us. All of it. All that good stuff. Yeah, yeah hey. definitely tap in. And I just want to encourage anyone that's listening that uh, of the minority demographic that are, if you hear these words, uh, seed, series A, series B, look incubator, them up. And you don't know all this stuff, I encourage you to go look it up. If you're looking into going into business, it doesn't even have to be a tech company. You can mm-hmm. be just looking to, you know, get some sort of uh, assistance mm-hmm. in whatever it is that you do. And I wish I knew about this stuff when I was starting my own business yeah, because I definitely didn't know about it. But there's so many resources that are out mm-hmm. there that I think are just hidden in plain sight. 
to a mm-hmm. lot of minority business owners that don't know. So I've been in incubators over this pandemic. Yep. I was yeah. in startup school. Yep. I was in Y yes. Combinator. Yeah, and I'm like, learning a lot. Learning where a has lot. this been? <laughs> yeah. I just didn't know. Right at your fingertips. Uh-huh. I just did not know about mm-hmm. it. So yes. I commend you, yes. you know, for doing Startup Starter because yeah, I think a lot you. of people just don't know what yeah. they don't know. Yeah. Um, so call him and pick yeah. his brain. Do not just work for anybody. Okay. Go do your own dream. Own College something. is great. It's a great experience. But you are learning and going to college so that you can work for somebody else and build their dream. Okay. Build your own. Boom. Period. And before we exit, I have to read this. My, my dad sent me a text message. Oh, you in trouble, girl? Um, he said, you guys are really good tonight. Love the banter. He started off saying, uh, okay. <laughs> he oh. said, careful on the 9-11 stuff, though. There's way more proven science there that meets the eye. Structural engineers are pretty unanimous and solid on this. Remember, looks can be, can be and tend to be deceiving. The earth does look flat from a limited point of view <laughs> and shallow less than six feet of the ground perspective. Exclamation point, yeah, question mark. Come on, dad, in these words. Anything Listen. that big and heavy would collapse on its self if weakened on the inside not tip over it's physics but if you believe in corruption (laughs) it can be both if you believe in corruption that it actually does happen then it's possible and i want to read about it i want to know about it of the of the the episode yes we appreciate you (laughs) dad Dad. but yes this has been a remarkable conversation did you have any takeaways or anything you want to say j pin k i mean nothing just keep listening follow us follow them hey Listen to us. All of my best friends. <laughs> At Limelight Live on Instagram and all other platforms. Limelight Live show. Show. That's right, because we are a show. Or you can go to lemayday.com and find all that information. Look at them co-founders working together. You know, period. He, that's what it's all about. But yes, we love and appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And make sure you are tuned in to the Good News Radio every yeah. day. Yeah. All right. Love y'all. See Thanks y'all for having us. Time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I want this book. I'm going to run out of here with it. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. I'm going to download it somewhere. <laughs> Bye.